Let's do that. And follow the story of the resurrection. Now, when the Sabbath was over, it says in verse 1, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might come and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. What's interesting about verse 2 is that um, it says that Mary came, uh, they came in the, at the beginning of the morning. They came at the beginning of the morning after the sun had come up. Right. The strange thing is that we find in the book of John that Mary comes when it's still dark. Yes, yeah, she comes before, uh, while, it, while uh, like you said, while it's still dark. Mm -hmm. And uh, this seems to conflict with what is being said here in the Gospel of Mark. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people will come and ask, uh, aren't there differences between these? Uh, how can you uh, put them together? How can you make them compatible for, to one another? Uh, they, they don't seem to agree. Uh, how could she come to the tomb before dawn and then come with her friends after dawn? If she had come before dawn, wouldn't she be talking to them already and say, by the way, right. I've already seen the stone is rolled away. I met the master. You know, they don't seem to be compatible. Well, the first thing I would say to somebody coming and saying, I found there were these differences between the Gospels. My reaction would be, amen, amen. You're reading your Bible closely enough that you notice that there were differences. <laughs> amen. <laughs> All right, now, what do we do with these differences? Well, let me put it this way. If we were to go to court, you know, we talked another time about going to court. If we were to go to court and they had people get up on the witness stand, and there were four witnesses, and the four witnesses said exactly the same thing. You know, their testimony about the accident was, I mean, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. What would you say about those four witnesses? That they probably had credible information. Credible information? Mm -hmm. If it was exactly alike? Well, I, that kind of goes back to the whole Jesus on the trial thing that we talked about in an earlier program. I guess maybe it would seem kind of fishy. It would seem kind of fishy. Yeah. It seemed like they were making things up. They had gotten together beforehand, and they had made up the story. Right. All right. So we actually expect people in a court of law, we expect witnesses to be a little bit different okay. in their testimony. Okay, I see where you're going. Yeah, you see where I'm going? Yeah. Now, so what we have is four Gospels where the testimony is not exactly alike. This should not destroy our faith. Mm -hmm. Instead, actually, it should build our faith. Right? I want to look at a text of Scripture. It's over in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1. 2 Peter 1, verses 16 to 19. Here's the Apostle Peter, and he has been um, preaching for a long time. He's been working, and now he's an old man, and he's writing here these words, 2 Peter 1, starting in verse 16, For we did not follow cleverly devised tales hmm. when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made to him by the majestic glory, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And we ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic word made more sure, to which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Now, I'm going to stop you right here for a minute, Professor, because okay. we have to take a break. But this is, this is a really, really interesting thing as we're, we're trying to figure out why they always don't agree, so to speak, in sure. the, the gospel writers. So if you're wondering why the gospel writers sometimes record things a little bit different than each other, stay tuned and you'll find out on Books of the Book. If you've enjoyed Books of the Book and would like a copy of this program, call 3ABN at 618-627-4651 during regular business hours. You may also order online at 3abn.org. Welcome back to Books of the Book. Holy men spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Professor, why don't you comment on the passage read? All right, well, we were reading 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 to 21, and the first thing we noticed was that Peter tells us we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known 
to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, a cleverly devised tale, they would have... Uh, corrected the inconsistencies. <laughs> corrected the inconsistencies. And actually, in later manuscripts, you see this happening, hmm. where they would bring them, you know, into accord with one another. So the scribes saw the differences and, you know, maybe didn't want the... Uh, didn't want that difference to be a stumbling block for somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, when actually, it's very encouraging. It's very encouraging that there are these differences because it points to people who are not trying to make stories up. Mm -hmm. And that encourages our faith. So when Which is a characteristic of the whole entire Bible, not just the book of Mark. Not just the book um, of Mark. The Bible doesn't try to cover up, you know, the things that may seem kind of rough and dark. And, yeah. You know, things that don't always conform to what we would consider a a polite society or so forth. You yeah, know? But it's very story. real in its, in its de um, depictions and, and rec records. Now, so Peter goes on to talk about the experience of the transfiguration. And he says, this experience confirmed to us the prophetic word. You read in verse 19, we have the prophetic word made more sure. It was already sure. Mm -hmm. the, the scriptures were already sure, but they were made more sure by this experience with Jesus on the mountain. And he says, you do well to pay attention to it as a lamp shining in a dark place. Mm. My friends, our world is a dark place. And we need the light of God's Word coming into our hearts, coming into our lives to uh, point the way as to where we should go. He goes on to talk about prophecy not being something that's of our own personal interpretation, but that prophecy came because people were moved by the Holy Spirit. So it's really interesting. The scriptures are a combination of the human and the divine. We might have this idea of inspiration that, well, if God said it, it had to be perfectly stated. You know, there couldn't be any grammar that was wrong. There couldn't be any differences. It had to be just so. Well, I'm sorry, that's not the way the Bible is. Mm -hmm. The Bible is a combination of divine inspiration and human language, human people, expressing things that touch their hearts and the way the Holy Spirit led them. There are these little differences, but they aren't big things. You know, little changes. Did she come before it was done or after it was done? Well, that's not a salvation issue, mm -hmm. but it show, actually shows you a little bit about uh, how these can be relied on, uh, on the big points that they make. So right. let's go back to Mark 16. And and speaking of um, them coming to the tomb, what, what right. brought the women to the tomb on Sunday? What brought the women to the tomb on Sunday? You see, the usual thing is when you were going to, when somebody died, uh, in a traditional society like this, it would be necessary to bury a person pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. There was no men, the Jews didn't practice embalming, the, the Egyptians did, right. uh, but the Jews didn't do that, and so uh, decay would set in pretty quickly, and so you had to bury somebody, you know, very shortly, with maybe 24 hours. Well, Jesus was buried very quickly, so quickly. Uh, it was Friday afternoon, and it was towards the end of the day, so it was getting closer to sunset, and that was the beginning of the Sabbath. So he was quickly buried, and they didn't have time to do the work of bringing spices or perfumes that they would typically do. They couldn't do that because the Sabbath intervened. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not really commented on here in Mark so much, but there were two things that brought them to the tomb on Sunday morning. One was the Sabbath, and the other was love. Now you say, what do you mean the Sabbath brought them to to the tomb. They didn't they uh, come on Sunday? Are you saying that's the new Sabbath? No, Mark gives no indication that this is a new Sabbath, uh, the day that Jesus rose. What we mean is they kept the Sabbath, and that's why they didn't go to the tomb. They didn't finish the work Friday, right. and they didn't buy, if you notice in verse 1, when the Sabbath was over is when they bought the spices, because you wouldn't buy something on the Sabbath day. That would be breaking the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So to keep the Sabbath, they waited until after sunset. Saturday night, they go buy these perfumes or spices. And then Sunday, the first light, they come to the tomb. So it was love, out of love, that they wanted to bring these perfumes. But it was the Sabbath also that brought right. them there. 